Tēnā koutou katoa. My name's Lucy Hemmons and I am a curator at Dunedin Public Art Gallery. And I'm coming to you today from the comfort of my own home during the 2020 COVID-19 lockdown. Now, as you all know, it's an unusual time around the world as we all play our part in this effort by staying close to home, which means for many of us, staying away from the art that we love, as well as the landscapes that lift our spirits. And so today, I thought I would take you on a virtual visit to a landscape that's close to the heart for many of us living here in Aotearoa, Dunedin, through the painting Otago Peninsula by the artist Colin McCann, made in the years between 1946 and 1949. Now you can see a reproduction of this painting here on this beautiful poster, which we produced at the gallery just over a month ago for the opening of our exhibition, The Land of Granite, McCann in Otago. And this post is a guide. It's an invitation to step out of the gallery and visit the places close by that inspired the artist or featured in his works in the exhibition. And while unfortunately that's not possible right now, I'd like to invite you to join me in looking together at one of these paintings, Colin McCann's Otago Peninsula, and at the landscape that inspired it. The painting we're looking at today, Otago Peninsula 1946 to 1949, is the third of three large paintings of the Otago Peninsula that are included in our exhibition A Land of Granite. And it might be seen as the culmination of this series of works looking at the landscape that McCann completed over the best part of a decade. The first of these paintings, Harbour Cone from Peggy's Hill, was finished in 1939 when the artist was 20 years of age. It is in itself a deeply important painting to McCann's career, a work he saw as an artistic breakthrough. In the painting, which includes aspects of the same landscape that we see here in Otago Peninsula, McCann began to break the land into a series of structural repeated shapes, claiming the landscape as something orderly and architectural, something stands separately to the interventions that humans have made on the landscape. The 1939 Harbour Cone from Peggy's Hill and the following two Otago Peninsula paintings in our exhibition are composed from Peggy's Hill, a summit near the settlement of Pukaheke and close to Larnock Castle. This photograph, taken from the saddle of Peggy's Hill, presents us with a very similar vantage point to that of McCann's works. Moving forward in time to 1946, we come to the beginnings of the painting we're looking at today, Otago Peninsula 46-49. An earlier version of this composition was completed in the first half of 1946, a commission by Mario and Hilda Fleischel, which was eventually made its way into the collection of Te Papa Tongarewa, the Museum of New Zealand. If you are interested in seeing it, you can view this painting by visiting Te Papa's website, Collections Online, and searching Otago Peninsula by Colin McCann. McCann attempted to paint the work in situ, but by all accounts, this effort was abandoned after his painting was blown down the valley in a gust of strong Otago wind. Here is another photograph from a similar vantage point in which you can see the location of Larnock Castle looking out towards Tairoa Head in the harbour. Otago Peninsula 1946-49 followed directly on from the Flashers' commission, with McCann beginning the painting in the middle of the year of 1946. In this painting, you can see he is continuing to strip back the landscape, creating a series of overlapping forms devoid of any sense of habitation. There are no roads, no houses, no power pylons or fences. Any patches of bush or forest have been removed, smoothed over and replaced with a spare structural landscape. In this composition, we can see the influence of a book McCann found deeply important, The Geomorphology of New Zealand by Sir Charles Cotton. Cotton's book was illustrated with diagrammatic sketches of the landscape as a structural form, images in which McCann found what he described as the anatomy of the landscape, a means of rendering the land in its most essential and fundamental form. Otago Peninsula 1946-49 was painted for Rodney Kennedy, who was a friend, a patron and a strong supporter of McCann. McCann initially finished the painting and exhibited it in 1946 as part of an exhibition at Modern Books, which was a progressive bookshop in Dunedin at that time. Unsatisfied, however, he returned to the work for an extensive period of repainting, finally deeming it complete in 1949. McCann wrote to Charles Brash that, 
the large painting has quite changed and is much better, but also requested that Brash ask Rodney to please let me know how the Peninsula painting seems to him when it comes back. I think he was somewhat disturbed to hear how much it had been repainted. Despite McCann's initial concern, Otago Peninsula held pride of place in Rodney Kennedy's home in Royal Terrace, Dunedin, where it hung over the fireplace for many, many years. We see it here in a 1954 photograph from Charles Brash's papers held at the Hocken Collections, and Brash, who lived for a time at Kennedy's home, wrote of the painting. Colin McCann's big painting of Otago Peninsula is one of the things I shall miss the most when we leave here. It seems part of the house. It fits so perfectly in that long panel above the mantelpiece in the old sitting room, Rodney's room, in colour close to the wallpaper. Colin has captured in it so remarkably the heroic proportions and brooding spirit of the place itself, but heightened and simplified. One feels that that is how God must have conceived the landscape in creating it, and Colin's imaginative conception can properly be called inspired. I suppose it is the finest landscape ever done in New Zealand to be thought of with Buchanan's Milford sound and nothing else. The painting Brash refers to here is the 1863 watercolour by John Buchanan, titled Milford Sound Looking Northwest from Freshwater Basin, which is also held in the Hocken Collections at the University of Otago. For Brash, Buchanan's Milford Sound and McCann's final Otago Peninsula became touchstones of excellence in art in Aotearoa, and McCann's painting remained firmly lodged in his mind as an artwork of singular importance. For many of us here in Ōtipoti, this painting is a familiar one, greeting us from its home on the first floor of Dunedin Public Library. It remained in Kennedy's collection until the end of his life, at which time it was bequeathed to the library in honour of city librarian Archie Dunningham and his wife Peggy. With the library a place where McCann spent many hours as a child and young man, and an institution whose excellent collection of books and resources were central to his art education, it seems a fitting resting place for this important work. And so, to conclude today, I'll deliver you back into the landscape that so inspired the young McCann and so many artists before and since, the view across Otago Peninsula featuring Hediweka or Harbour Cone. Hopefully it won't be too long before we can step out into this landscape again and enjoy that inspiring view and feel the bracing Otago wind that blew McCann back indoors to paint. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you back in the gallery before too long. Nōrera, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.